Before diving into the complex things, let us get the basics straight. First, let us start off by discussing dynamic linking and static linking. Right now, you don't have to know in detail how the dynamic linking works, but yeah, let's look at them. Linking is nothing but connecting something to another. In this case, we are seeing different types of connections of binaries to libraries or its dependencies. Let us start off by creating a C program that does two printf statements. Now time to compile them statically with gcc tac tac static test.c tac o test. Let's run this program. And yeah, we get the two printed statements. Now let us see how the binary is in the disassembly. So let's hop into gdb. pd main to disassemble main. Then break at puts and run the binary. Now look at the address of puts. And now let's look at the VM map for the binary, which will give the memory mappings of the binary. We see the address from OX 400000 to 4C3000 belongs to this binary, which means that the function is inside our binary. So when puts gets called, it will jump to puts function in the executable section in the binary and successfully runs the program. Static linking is as simple as that. All the functions we need are inside the binary. Moving on to dynamic linking and the beginning of GOT and PLT. Compile the binary normally with gcc test.c tac o test. Let's look at the main function now. Here we see puts at PLT. Also a side note, the reason why there is no printf but puts is during the compilation, the compiler understood that there is no format strings for this printf. So it replaced printf with puts as it's more efficient. Okay, let's run the binary in gdb once and then pd puts. Wow, a really huge address. This can mean only one thing. The address is directly from libc or binary's dependency. This can again be confirmed by VM map. Now let us exit and come back in and see what the address was before running in GDB. So PD puts to show the disassembly of puts function. Okay, this function seems nothing like the real puts function. So let us see what this interesting thing is. There are three statements in the puts at PLT. The first statement will jump to the GOT table of puts. So this GOT table is like the table containing all the real address of functions and variables in the libc. In simple terms, GOT is nothing but a table full of libc function addresses in particular order. But are things really that simple? Does the GOT contain the address of puts function from the libc? No. Yeah, that's right. The GOT is initially filled with the address of the next instruction in the PLT, which will push off a number, then call something called a DL runtime resolve. Okay, time to explain. First, when the binary calls the put function, it jumps to the PLT, which has the first instruction as jump to the GOT table of puts, which will jump back to the next instruction in the PLT which will push a number, not a random number, but this number can be thought of as an index of the name of the function in the string table. This string is passed to the DL runtime resolve, which will find the libc address of puts and change the GOT table with the correct address of the puts function. This is brilliant, isn't it? Because the next time puts is being called, it will directly jump to the GOT table and it won't return to the PLT section. So you might have guessed that due to this, the time in runtime increases. Yeah, but computers are pretty fast, so we don't see the small time lag. Finally, I also want to end this by saying that static linking and dynamic linking has its own advantages and its disadvantages. One, the size of the program will be a little big as the whole libc is stored inside the program. This won't affect the users who are just 
uh, using one libc but this will affect the users who use multiple dependencies in larger program also many people can work on this binary as there won't be any problem in the dependency as dependency is already built in the binary whereas in dynamic linking the program size is pretty small and also many people can't work in the same project if they have different dependencies yup computers are indeed amazing isn't it we'll see you in the next video where we'll try to exploit this global offset table with an overwrite so bye bye